everyone. My name is Cheryl Ann Hills and uh, I'm the artist who's been very lucky to be able to create these beautiful artworks for the city of Pickering. Um, I spent a lovely day on the beach waterfront and we did just a small plein air painting and then uh, I went back to my studio and you can see the uh, piece that I created behind me here. Studio artwork is very different to create as compared to when you are working outdoors. Uh, working outdoors you have to work very quickly and uh, so a lot of the time the work that you produce is just a sort of a very quick impression of um, what you're seeing in front of you where in the studio you have the time to uh, relax and uh, spend time and working on a concept. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, congratulations to the city of Pickering for making it through 2020 and let's hope that 2021 will be better for all of us. Hello and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be demonstrating a larger piece that uh, I had started out uh, as a plein air piece at the uh, promenade waterfront. Um, the first video that I produced, it's possible you may have had a chance to take a look at it, was uh, featuring me on the beach um, creating that smaller artwork. And then now I've gone back into the studio with the smaller artwork and uh, some of the images, um, photographs that I've taken, and I'm going to start working on a much larger piece. This one is um, 18 inches high and it's 24 inches wide. And I'm just starting off with uh, my usual, I'll use either a charcoal pencil to sketch things out. And lately I've actually been using raw umber uh, oil paint. I use oil paint when I create my work. And uh, I've thinned it out a little bit with some walnut oil. And I'm just sketching in the, uh, the large shapes. Whenever I teach my students here in the studio or online, I talk about being uh, very important just to sketch out the large shapes when you're working on a composition. Um, the importance of that is to, is basically you're testing out to see how things look on the page. I know a lot of artists um, will start off in say the top corner or the bottom corner or even the middle of the page and uh, they'll do every single piece and work out the detail and have it absolutely perfect and then kind of work out from there. The problem is, and I discovered this when I was in high school and college when I was first learning all about uh, art and the best way to approach things, and I would do the head and then I would do the legs and then all of a sudden I started to do the body and I ran out of room and so it would always end up looking awkward when I was done because the composition hadn't been worked out ahead of time. So it's really important if you want to have something that's very successful in appearance to start off with just a, a very basic sketch of where you want things to lay on the page. It's so much easier to change things at this point than it is when you've already invested two or three hours into a highly detailed section of your work. A lot of this video as well I'm going to be fast forwarding because it did take me about four hours to complete this uh, artwork from start to finish and I'm not going to make you sit through all of that. Um, a lot of it is repetition of strokes, repetition of using certain colors, kind of standing back looking at the work like I'm doing now and then uh, going back in adding more things. Something interesting to note when you are working on uh, artwork, landscape artwork especially, it's okay to change what you see in front of you. Um, sometimes what you see in front of you doesn't work as far as an interesting composition or it ends up being too confusing for the viewer. Um, the photo that I took of this gorgeous tree that's sort of reaching across as if it's going to hug everybody that's walking past um, has a lot of intertwined branches. Now I can certainly um, sit down and record those exactly as I see them um, but there's a couple angles that were a little bit awkward when things are crossing and crisscrossing so in order to 
um, get people to and get the eye flowing across the canvas when someone is looking at the picture later when it's completed you need to sort of think about where those branches are pointing you don't want everything pointing off the page because then the viewer's eye is going to be led off the page and this tree actually is naturally quite photogenic um, because a lot of the branches do arch down and around <clears throat> which brings the viewer's eye back into the composition so it was quite nice to work with um, it was a bit of a tangled mess so rather than again put in everything that I see I decided to choose um, three or four or five major trunks and work off of those so right now I'm just kind of standing back adding in the branches and just because I put in a line doesn't mean that that's it that I can't change that and now for the next four hours I'm stuck with it um, the thing about creating artwork is it's all about decision making and it's okay to make a decision and then decide later as you're working on the composition to change your mind and uh, move into a different direction which for me uh, there's a lot of um, I guess similarities when you're creating artwork to making decisions in life really um, just because we've started down a path in life doesn't mean we're stuck and that we have to continue on that path um, we can make changes at any point in our lives and uh, I encourage you if you feel that you're you're in a wrong direction then definitely uh, make a change uh, if 2020 hasn't shown us anything, it has shown us that uh, we need to be more flexible. I mean, we need to be more willing to make changes and to reflect on the direction that we're heading and decide if that's something that we really want to continue with. Well, I really hope that you uh, enjoy this video. And uh, we'll be continuing on with doing uh, the drawings portion of this uh, composition.
So at this point I'm just filling in the negative shapes and the negative shapes are what is shown in between those tree branches. It does take a little bit of time, um, a lot longer than if I had gone in and put the sky first, waited a couple weeks for it to dry and then put the tree and the branches over top. Um, some artists like to do it that way. They like to layer on top. Other artists like to do the negative space painting. I change it up depending on my mood. Um, for this particular piece, I had a little bit of a deadline. So I decided to just go ahead and do the negative painting. I didn't really have time to wait in between. So sometimes it has to do with your schedule and other times it has to do with what you're looking for and the effect. starting to work on the water at this point and I like to start on the horizon line which is the line where the sky and the, the ground or the water in this case meet. Um, most often the horizon line water um, that part will be the lightest blue or whatever color the water is that you're deciding to do and then as you get closer it tends to get lighter. Now that's not a firm, hard, fast rule. It's a general rule. Because I know when you walk along and you look out over the lake, depending on the weather and depending on what's going on in the sky, sometimes it does look darker further away than it does closer up. But often artists will use the effect if they want distance, they will use the effect of having things lighter in the distance and darker, closer up. And that helps give you that sense of depth in the artwork. Uh, 
Now I like to layer in the waves especially. I'll start off with either a very light blue or a very white for the white caps and I'll put those in first and then I'll move, move to a medium color and then I'll go to the, the other extreme, the darker or the lighter. And this just helps me to visualize as I'm going along. The other thing you should try to remember when you're doing water is if you want to have waves, you're not going to be able to see all the detail of a wave that's far off in the distance. So as far as putting detail in, try to keep your detail to things that are just close to the viewer in the foreground. And things in the background should be a lot fuzzier and blurred out. Again, that just all helps with uh, giving the effect of distance and depth in your artwork. I'm starting to work on the beach itself at this point. Again, just lying uh, down some bright colors where I think the sun will be reflecting off the sand. This particular section of the beach had a lot of footprints in it, so there was a lot of different texture going on. It looks like this area gets very well traveled. Now, I've been told it's a very popular area for the residents of Pickering to wander down and uh, especially in 2020 to wander down and take a walk along the beach and the waterfront and sort of ponder what's what's happening right now and things that they need to do and things places that they want to go and it's been quite a year that's for for very certain I'm just laying down some basic color onto the beach for the beach sand of um, Lake Ontario I like to use uh, it's a brown there's a there's a brown in there but I also use a bit of red mixed in with it and a bit of yellow and some of the white to lighten it up and that's gonna gives us that golden pinky color that you see on the sand around uh, in this area you know, occasionally you'll have the back of my head on here it's a little tricky when I'm filming it kinda restricts me from standing on that side of the painting and working on things I've done quite a few uh, online workshops now and so I've sort of have adjusted the way I paint to to fit that. It's not always ideal. Sometimes I have if I have to do a, a really detailed section over on that far left side then I'll uh, I'll film it but then I'll cut it out later because all you're seeing is the back of my head so <laughs>
focusing on that far background the little bit of the Scarborough Bluffs that you can see off in the distance in this particular day in November that I was out there there were some brilliant colors on the trees back there and I wanted to capture that and later I'll be bringing that brilliant color into the tree in the foreground We keep the, the whitest, brightest colors back there for the rock face that's reflecting the sun. Again, just filling in the background. There's some trees back in behind this tree. You can't really see the trunks, but you can see the branches and some of the foliage. So we're just kind of dotting that in. When you're working with uh, oil paints, especially, which is what I use pretty much exclusively, a lot of it is uh, the process is layering. So we're sort of putting this in, but this isn't the final say. There's going to be more over top of this, and you'll see that as we go along. And then oftentimes, too, I'll put in a section that I think is going to work. And then later on, as I'm working, I'll go back and I'll completely change it. Again, it's all about decision making. Making decisions and being willing to change those decisions as you move along if things aren't working. The work is starting to come together at this point. You've got uh, your sky, your water, you've got that far background. I'm working on more shadows here right below the tree where the tree is touching the sand. Still have to work on the tree. That's going to be coming very soon. find with uh, creating something large like this you tend to slow down as you get more and more into the painting the beginning part you can work rather quickly you're just laying in very big blocks of color and then as you get closer to the end you sort of slow down you step back you take a look make adjustments At this point, I just want to add a little reminder to everyone about social distancing and about uh, paying attention to uh, what's going on right now. Being kind and courteous whenever you can to everyone, your neighbors, your friends, strangers. We're all going through a really tough time right now and uh, we're sharing in the discoveries that we're making along the way, and we're also sharing in the difficulties. Take the time to come back to nature and to reflect and think about what really matters in your life. I find even when I'm out there doing a painting like this, I'm 
I'm focusing on the work, but I'm also thinking about my own life and where I want to go and things I want to do. I find nature is very helpful with grounding us. some nice details and some nice highlights and shadows in on the tree at this point. I love trees. Every time I do a tree it's different. For me every tree is like creating a portrait of a person because every tree is an individual. This one, as soon as I saw it, I thought, wow, this has so much character. It's reaching across. It's almost like it's it's trying to hug the water and the sand and maybe even you as you walk underneath it. It's a beautiful sign of hope. things to come.
So at this point, I just want to say thank you to the City of Pickering, especially the Community Services Department um, and uh, the Cultural Services Department, whose support and vision has made this project possible. Without their uh, wonderful support, I would not have been able to uh, create such a beautiful artwork for the City, city of Pickering and uh, do these wonderful demonstration videos. Please enjoy the rest of your year and uh, let's welcome in 2021 together. Thanks for watching.